Hey guys, welcome back to Burning Rubber Garage. The uh, Suburban finally let me down. Uh, as you'll see here, I'll talk a little more in details. I'm just going to get the starter. Uh, starter's right there. Had to drop the exhaust, take out the inner fender well, take the tire off. It is a process and a half, but I went to come out and turn it and all I could hear was the rod shoot out and hit. It didn't have the ability to turn over anymore. So the first thing that this thing has had go wrong with it is the starter. And of course, uh, it has to be on this side. So uh, as you can look here, this just you can't go out the front. There's too many things. You can't go out the back. So you got to drop the exhaust, which is that clamp right there, and drop it down. Um, the funny thing is this, is, this is a lot taller than I'm used to. If it was over here, it would, you could just pull it right out. There's nothing back there because you got your turbo right there. And then the exhaust drops right down and back there. So uh, everything is literally over here, which sucks. But uh, I'll go into some tips and tricks on this thing. I had to use several extensions. I'd say about a foot and a half worth of extensions and a 15 millimeter to get the two bolts out, uh, mainly the bottom bolt. And then just a couple little things to undo the electrical to it. Uh, once I dropped the exhaust, I had to push it down and away like this. So, I mean, that's supposed to be over like this. So we pushed it down and out and I was able to wiggle it through. So let me show you the starter. There's the old C10. We'll get to work on it again soon. So this is a lot bigger than a gasoline starter. Uh, diesels, as you know, don't have spark plugs. They are compression. So this thing, I think this is probably our issue right there. This thing is just trashed. It's uh, funny it made it that long. Everything on this is just super nasty, trashed. Uh, funny it worked as long as it did. Uh, I don't even know if this is, I don't know if this is the original or not, hard to tell, but this is the starter. So I'm going to go get a starter and then I'll come back, let you know what other sizes we need and stuff like that. All right, guys, we're going to see if we can get this back up there. Uh, it is a real treat, to say the least, to get this in there. Definitely not easy, that's for damn sure. Just make sure you feed it in the right way and that will definitely help make sure that exhaust is off to the side get that big part past that now, I cannot remember a hundred percent how I got this past that so we got to get this up I'll probably get my hand out of the way Hitting that manifold now. Bring it back this way. What are we hitting there? Nothing? That might be our, our mode of attack. This thing is not white to be moving like this by yourself. Let's get that somewhat close to in the place there. This is probably a nice plug for safety glasses. Let's see if I can reach that bolt. That would be amazing. All right. Working by yourself sometimes is not as easy as it looks, but it happens. So I'm gonna bring this starter up like this, put that in. All right, so to get this in, I've got the bolt in there. We're going to be using two extensions to try and get it there. Hopefully that will hold it and we can get this put in. You, I was using, I believe, one more of the longer extensions, not the short ones, to get it there. So let's see if I can sit you back up here. Push up on the starter. 
get that threading by hand. The nice thing about threading it by hand is you know you're not stripping it if you're using a, a ratchet. You run the high risk of stripping that out. Now with that exhaust in the way, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I like to grab my, my wrench. I'm going to tighten it up like that because the socket, I just felt like I couldn't get it that tight. So I'm going to tighten that down there just the same way as I took it off. I came from the bottom, tighten it that way and tighten the top. It's 15 millimeter. Uh, definitely something you can do. The other trick I had was this little shorty ratchet versus kind of your standard size. Half the size there. So. I'm going to get these tightened up and we'll show you and then we'll get the power wire. So I got those both tightened. There's two bolts there, that one and one down there. I'll show you with my hand if I can get my hand in there, right down in there. Uh, you get them on there, get them tight by hand, use your little shorty ratchet. And then after that, you will uh, use that box end wrench and get a little pressure on there. Uh, one thing you want to do is take the nuts off of those two. You're going to have two connections on there. Uh, small ones pretty self-explanatory and the larger one goes up top you want to crank those down I'll get you those sizes when we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the exhaust back up All right, so I'm gonna tighten that up. It's a 12 just put the bolt on there, make sure they line up good and the band clamp will hold them together. You'll definitely want to check for leaks there. This one is aftermarket. Uh, we have PPE upper and lower pipes and manifolds and everything done to this one, which is really nice. Uh, just that right there tightens down. You can kind of see how that clamp right there, we turn it, it just tightens this down like this. So get them lined up best you can. You have to do a little pulling. Uh, if you have another jack and you're really struggling, you could put a little jack under this pipe. Not too much pressure, but just enough to push it up and in. I think if I push it up with my knee, it'll stay. Mine's pretty tight downstream. Uh, let's go ahead. I'll get that tight and we'll come back. All right. So the top one that I've got hooked on there is a 13 and the bottom one is an 8. Those will be easy to get to with your small, small ratchet. Uh, shouldn't be too tough to do that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Small wire goes back on the small wire. Big wire goes back on the big wire. Get them nice and tight and you should be good. All right, so here's the moment of truth. We got everything hooked up down in here. Those two wires are there. Uh, that's tight. Exhaust is back up. Pretty sure that's uh, hooked up really good. Now what you got to do the battery up we got a one battery here and another one over there so i went and hooked the positives back up so with that i think we've nailed it now we just got to put this fender back in Tire back on, pull out the jack stand, drop the jack. So again, we don't have the oil pressure, but all the lights are off, which is nice. I'm gonna set you right here and talk to you on the edge of the seat uh, this project was not easy um, cut myself up uh, stressed about buying the starter that's probably one of the biggest uh, pains i've had is trying to figure out what starter to buy uh, i, I want i love going ac delco because that's factory but it's just been, it's been rough. Uh, I ended up going with the Duralast because I've had theirs in the Nova. It lasted 10 years. Uh, and we put a lot of stress on that Nova when we set the fuel injection up. So uh, I went with the uh, AutoZone. They were really nice to work with. They have a, a warranty. Sorry about that. Uh, anyways, I was talking about starters. I, I, I tried Rock Auto. I tried O'Reilly. Uh, I was a little upset with AutoZone to start. I called. They said they had one for $139. 
uh, with a $40 core, and I was okay with that. Uh, ended up being 169. Uh, I got down there, and the guy's like, "Oh, I don't know what happened. I must have looked at the wrong one." Uh, this starter is definitely a lot bigger than even the one on the big block on the Nova. It's uh, it's a it's a big boy starter. Um, I looked at Rock Auto. The problem with Rock Auto is I didn't want to wait for shipping, so. Uh, I found an AC Delco, which apparently was remanufactured. If I want a brand new one, I got to pay, I think it was 300 plus bucks for something that hasn't been in another vehicle. And I just thought, whatever. But when I pulled this one out, you could see it was rotted, uh, pretty trashed. Funny how it had even worked this long. So I'm really happy to have the big girl back on the road. Uh, next up, I think we got a, I got a stereo system to go in it and stuff like that. So I uh, do appreciate you subscribing. We'll get this thing going. Uh, I've got the trailer brake controller I'm going to hook up soon. Uh, it's going to be a fun little project. It's going to be a, a definite, definite fun little project because then when it's done, then we can start going to the track and pulling cars and doing stuff like that. But It's hard to beat this vehicle because it's got 1,500 miles on it since the swap, and it's pulling 20-plus miles per gallon easy with some idle time. You can't get another Suburban that's going to be able to do everything this can do and get mileage. I know the new ones are rated at that. You're not going to get that. They, they struggle. The 5.3 struggles. But then again, even if you get that, you can't put a big trailer behind it either. So um, I think you can tow about 8,000 pounds, maybe 9 at most. I think it's the Expedition that can tow 9. But you're not going to be able to get the mileage. I'm going to get the mileage towing and when I'm not towing. So that's freaking amazing. I really like this vehicle. If you want to see more of this, I got some more videos I'm going to do. We're going to work on the 97 Suburban. We got a couple things for the C10 coming. Uh, a lot of fun stuff coming up. Please subscribe, hit that like button. Uh, if you have a comment, leave it down below. I try and respond to them all. Sometimes I miss a few. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, gosh, this is, this is just what I'm excited for right here. Yeah! She's back to running. Back in business. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.